Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi everyone. Okay, uh, so uh, my name is Madam Monuru Hidayah binti Wan Anwar. So today's video is on um, continuation, the chapter 5 on prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Alright, so basically, um, I'm going to talk about on the remaining organelles in the eukaryotic cells. So this is the figure showing the eukaryotic cells with um, each of the organelles inside them. Alright, so previously you have studied on the organelles in eukaryotic cells which consisting of um, nucleus, the ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, and the vacuoles. Okay, so to this video, we, we will focus on the remaining of the organelles inside the eukaryotic cells. The organelles are mitochondria, chloroplast, and last but not least, the cytoskeleton. Okay, so firstly, we are going to focus on the uh, mitochondria. Okay, as you can see here, this is the picture showing of the organelles of mitochondria. As you can see here, the mitochondria is a double membrane bounded organelle. You can see the two membranes here. Okay, so what is mitochondria? Um, basically, the mitochondria is the major source of ATP, which is the cellular energy storage molecule. So, this molecule is actually for the storage for the energy that is obtained from a cellular respiration. The nickname for um, this mitochondria we are also known as the powerhouse as it harbor the energy. And the appearance of this mitochondria, as you can see here, like a bin shape. Alright, so mitochondria is basically found in both plant and animal cells. Alright, so both of animals and plant cells uh, consist of this mitochondria for uh, energy storage. And these mitochondria are basically bounded by double membrane, as I mentioned earlier. And inside the membrane, it, it, uh, it is surrounded by fluid field that is called as a matrix. Okay, so the fluid field inside these uh, mem uh, the organelles, we call it as the matrix. Okay, so uh, the inner membranes of these mitochondria, as you can see here in the folding forms, okay, so it is folded. So this inner, uh, these folding forms of the inner membranes of the mitochondria is called the cristae. Okay, so what is the function for the these folding uh, forms is basically to increase the surface area for the chemical reactions, uh, particularly for the um, cellular uh, respiration. Okay, and other than that, the matrix, um, the fluid inside these organelles is actually contains the enzymes. Okay, so what is the function of enzyme? Basically, it will break down the carbohydrates. It will break down the carbohydrates into a smaller particles and this cristae houses the protein complexes which is, um, it is embedded with the protein complexes that eventually uh, um, will um, um, pro promoting uh, the process of producing abundance of the ATP. Alright, okay, and the, this mitochondria basically has 5 to 10 identical circular molecules of the DNA, what we call as the plasmid, and it accounting up to 1% of the total DNA in our cell. Okay, so what is the basic functions of the mitochondria? As, you, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is the site for cellular respiration where we are harboring the energy. So the energy is formed in the mitochondria. Okay, so how, how did the energy uh, formation is done by the mitochondria is by breaking down the food into um, ATP. So we are going to break down our food, for example, the carbohydrates, and we are going to make the ATP the forms of energy 
that uh, cellular recognize. Okay, uh, ATP is the main ATP, also known as the adenosine triphosphate, is the major fuel for all cells activities that requires the energy. So, uh, all the activities uh, of an organism, for example, in us, we need to walk, we need to think. So we um, uh, basically needs the energy. So the energy that we are talking about is the ATP. Alright, so second organelles that we are going to discuss is the chloroplast. Okay, so uh, the chloroplast is the organelles that will conduct the photosynthesis. So this uh, chloroplast is unique to the organism that is photoautotroph, that um, organism that can make their own food. Okay, so basically, the chloroplast is similar in the structure to the mitochondria in a way that the chloroplast also a double membrane bounded organelles. So you can see it has the outer membrane and also the inner membrane. Alright, so um, just that the chlorophyll, uh, the chloroplast um, has the photosynthetic membranes in the thylakoid. So which is the thylakoid? This is the thylakoid. Inside here, you will have the chlorophyll functions for the photosynthesis process. And the chlorophyll is basically green in color so that you can see the chloroplast appears in green. And the functions for the chloroplast uh, mainly to trap energy from the sun and to produce the food for the for the plant cells. Okay, so basically, plant cells is unique to have these organelles, uh, whereby uh, these plant cells can make their own food by converting the energy from the sun to the energy that uh, can be stored in the uh, plant as their own food. Alright, so lastly, we are going to uh, discuss on the cytoskeleton. So this cytoskeleton is uh, the network of interlinking protein filaments that are uh, present in the cytoplasms of all cells. So inside your cells, you will have the cytoplasms and in the cytoplasm, you will have the cytoskeleton. It's basically similar to our skeleton um, that function in uh, shapes and structure. So this is um, a skeleton that functions to the cells. That's why the name is the cytoskeleton. Okay, so cytoskeleton, which is a network of fibers, the protein fibers that extend throughout the cytoplasms, is function to aids in cellular support and movement. And it also functions to give the cell shape and also organizes and tethers the organelles in uh, its locations. And uh, it also has the roles in the molecule transport, cell division, and cell signaling. Okay, uh, so basically, the uh, cytoskeleton composed of three components, three main components. So, uh, the three components are intermediate filaments, which is the fibrous protein, uh, function mainly in support. Um, secondly, is the microtubules. Okay, so this is a globular protein uh, made up from a tubulin, uh, also for support and the cell motility. Um, and last but not least, the microfilament, um, also globular protein made up from actin and it also for support and the cellular contraction. Alright, so this is the microscopic view of our cell for example. Okay, so this is a cell. Uh, as you can see here, this is the blue dots which is the nucleus. All right, the nucleus of a cell and the uh, microfilaments of these cells are shown in red. So these red colors uh, is the microfilament which has been stained uh, by uh, this kind of um, staining and microtubules are shown in the green. So this is basically the skeleton for the cells of uh, um, eukaryotic cells.
All right, so let us discuss on the three main types of the cytoskeleton. So firstly, we are going to focus on the microfilaments, also known as the actin filaments. All right, so these filaments is basically made up from the actin. Okay, so um, we are going to discuss on the first, the structure and then the function. So for the structure, uh, for the microfilaments, it is uh, 3 to 6 nanometer in diameter, which is the thinnest filaments among the three main components of the cytoskeleton. And uh, microfilaments, um, suggesting by its name, the so micro is a very fine thread-like protein fibers, um, but it is actually the solid rods of globular protein, but it's a very uh, thin uh, fibers. Alright, um, so the structure of these microfilaments is basically um, consists of these two strands. Okay, you can see the first strands and the second strands. So we have two strands of actin uh, wound in spiral. So it wound in a spiral shape. Okay, so the microfilaments functions is um, it's actually important components for the cytoskeleton, which offers the support to the cell structure. All right, so uh, basically, um, microfilaments uh, will associate with uh, the other protein components, um, which is the myosin, uh, made up the actin and myosin, um, is responsible for the muscle contraction. Okay, other than that, the functions of the microfilaments is aiding in cellular movement, including the gliding, which allow a single cell organism, such as the ameba, to move by its pseudopodium, and also will aid in the contraction, for example, in the muscle contractions, and also in the cytokinesis for the cell division, where uh, the cytoplasm is divided, um, into two daughter cells. Okay, so the second main component of the cytoskeleton is the intermediate filaments. Okay, for the structures of the intermediate filaments, uh, the size of the intermediate filaments is uh, ranging uh, 8 to 12 nanometers in diameters and it is called intermediate because um, the sizes are in between of the size of microfilaments, the thinnest, and the microtubules. Okay, so um, the intermediate filaments made up from different proteins such as the keratin, vimentin, dasmin um, in the cytoplasm, and also lamin in the nucleus. Intermediate filaments functions in maintain the cell shapes, bear tension, and also provide structural support for the cells. Okay, so for the last uh, main components of um, cytoskeleton is the microtubules. Okay, so for the structure of microtubules, these microtubules is the largest um, cytoskeleton for about 23 nanometers in diameter. So it is not called as the filament, it is called as the tubules. Okay, so uh, this microtubules is a hollow tubes made of alpha and beta tubulins. As you can see here, the alpha, uh, beta tubulin in the green color and the yellow color is the alpha tubulin. So it, it made up from these two, uh, alpha and beta tubulin. And um, these microtubules basically form structures like the flagella and also found in the cilia. The functions of microtubules basically in the cell division by forming the spindle apparatus which uh, is a function in separating the sister chromatids. Other than that, microtubules also involve in the transporting molecules within the cells. Uh, and last but not least, uh, microtubules also involve in the formations of the cell wall in the plant cell.
Okay, so this is basically the comparison for the cytoskeleton components of microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and the microtubules. So in the microfilaments, you can see uh, it is made up from subunits called actins, and uh, microtubules is made up from subunits called tubulins. And for the intermediate filaments, it is um, more complicated as it forms uh, in constructed like woven ropes composed of the tetramers of fibrils. Okay, um, this is the uh, what we call the microscopic view of um, these cytoskeleton components uh, stained under the microscope. Okay, so as you can see here, this uh, the microfilaments here is in the blue network surrounding the pink nucleus here. And for this one, the intermediate filaments, you can see this purple bat like network um, under the microscope. And last but not least, for the microtubules here, uh, it appears as a gold network here surrounding the cell's pink nuclei in these uh, photos. Okay, so this is the overall comparison for the three main components of the cytoskeleton which is it shares the uh, similar functions in maintenance of the cell shapes for uh, these three um, uh, cytoskeleton uh, and it will have uh, the distinct um, functions for the microtubules which involving the cell motility and uh, the chromosome movement in cell division and also for the organelle movement and in the microfilaments uh, it is uh, functions in changes in the cell shapes muscle contractions uh, cytoplasmic streaming cell motility for single cell organism for example the pseudopodia and uh, also in cell division for cleavage furrow and uh, for the intermediate filaments, um, the main function is to uh, anchor the nucleus and certain other organelles and also functions in the formation of the nuclear lamina. Okay, so for the extensions of the um, cytoskeleton, we are going to discuss these organelles that is made up from uh, microtubules, which is the centrioles. Okay, so centrioles is the organelles that only uh, involve in the animal uh, cells. And uh, centrioles is basically the cylindrical organelles composed mainly of a protein called a tubulin. So remember again, the tubulin is the structures from the microtubules. Okay, so let's take a look at the structure of the centrioles. So basically, the centriole is found only in the animal cells and it is self-replicating. And these centrioles is composed of the microtubules and it helps to organize microtubules assembly during the cell divisions, both in the mitosis and the meiosis. And as you can see in the structure here, it is arranged in 9 plus zero patterns so nine one two three four five six seven eight nine plus zero patterns okay so next is cilia and flagella uh, this is also uh, extension from the cytoskeleton and what is cilia and flagella so basically cilia and flagella is the projections from the cells Okay, so cilia and flagella are the external appendages from the cell membrane that aid in locomotions of the cells. And uh, cilia also help to move substances past the membrane. And for the structure, cilia and flagella is uh, made in 9 plus 2 microtubule patterns. So you can always um, count uh, the microtubule 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 plus 2 here. So it is 9 plus 2 microtubule pattern. 
Okay, so we have finished discuss on the organelles inside the cells. Okay, so now we are going to uh, go a little bit outside of the cells and the structure of these outside cells is called the extracellular matrix. For the extracellular matrix, uh, this structure is important in the animal cell where animal cells lacking of the cell wall, so uh, it will have uh, elaborate extracellular matrix. So as, it, as you can see from this diagram, this is the barrier of your cells, basically the plasma membrane, and this is the what we call as the extracellular matrix. So the main ingredient of the extracellular extracellular matrix are the glycoproteins secreted by the cells and the most abundant glycoprotein in the extracellular matrix is the collagen okay so uh, this collagen uh, which will form the strong fibers outside the cells Okay, so um, in the extracellular matrix, you will have the collagen fibers. So these collagen fibers is basically embedded in a network woven from proteoglycan. So this is the proteoglycan. Okay, um, the fibronectin and other extracellular matrix proteins bind to cell surface receptors proteins called integrins. So you can see here, this is the fibronectin binds to the integrins. Um, uh, integrins is built into the plasma membrane. Okay, so the interconnections from the extracellular matrix to the cytoskeleton inside the cells um, is formed via the fibronectin integrin link which uh, eventually permit the interactions of changes inside and outside the cells. Okay, so now let's discuss on the cell walls and cell membranes involving the glycocalyx. Okay, so let's first discuss on the cell walls. The cell wall um, basically found in prokaryotes, examples the bacteria, also in fungi and some other proteins that has multiple functions. Uh, and in plants, the cell walls protect the cells, maintain its shapes and prevents excessive uptakes of the water. And uh, it also supports the plant against the force uh, of gravity. And basically, uh, the cell walls differ in the thickness and chemical compositions and it will, um, depending on the species, to differentiate between species to species and all and among all the cell types. Okay, let's see uh, for the plant cell walls. Okay, so the plant cell walls compose of polysaccharides and proteins and it formed from fibrils of cellulose molecules in a matrix of polysaccharide and glycoprotein. So this is the main ingredient for the plant cell walls, which are the polysaccharides and proteins. And it also have the strong cellulose fibers surrounding the plant cells. The functions of the plant cell walls basically to provide support and protection to the cell membrane and also to protect and give the rigidity to the plant cells. Okay, so let us discuss on the plant cell walls. Alright, so basically for the plant cell walls, a mature cell wall consists of the primary cell wall, a middle lamella with sticky polysaccharides that holds the cell together, and the layers of the secondary cell wall. Okay, so you can refer uh, the structure based on this diagram. So as you can see here, we are going to make a cross section here, uh, this part, and we are going to enlarge these uh, sections. Okay, as you can see here, uh, for uh, there are two cells here, the first cells and the second cells. So here is the cytosol or cytoplasm of the first cells and this is the cytosol for the second cell. Okay, it is um, blocked by the plasma membrane here and then you will have these uh, plant cell wall layers that made up from 
um, first is the secondary cell wall to the primary cell walls and you are going to have the middle lamella that is um, composed of the sticky polysaccharides that holds the cell together from one uh, cells to the other cells here. All right, and at the plant cells also, you are going to have a tiny holes which uh, cytoplasmic connections between adjacent cells may run. So here, you will have this hole. Okay, so this hole will uh, you will have the connection called the plasmodesmata. Okay, so the plasmodesmata will permit the direct cell to cell communication through the cell wall. Okay, so this cell wall um, uh, is. Um, going to separate it by the plasmodesmata uh, to permit the uh, direct cell to cell communic communication from this one cell to their adjacent cell wall. Okay, so this is the other diagram showing uh, two uh, adjacent cell of the plant cell, the cell one and the cell two. And uh, as you can see here, um, the yellow part is the cell wall and uh, it is um, stick by the middle lamella from um, this um, structure. Okay, um, and also you uh, are going to see this plasmodesmata. So basically it's function to permit communication between cell to cells. Okay, so basically for the cells, we have two different types of protections uh, that is possessed by the cells, which are the plasma membrane and also the cell wall. Okay, so the plasma membrane is basically possessed by all types of cells and the cell walls is only unique for a certain uh, kind of organism such as in the plant. Okay, so uh, uh, we can compare the cell wall and plasma membrane based on their functions is that for the cell wall the main functions is to give the shape and support to the plant cells otherwise in the plus uh, in the plasma membranes that is possessed by all types of cells the functions is to control the movement of substances in and out of the cells okay so because of that uh, the and the cell walls is highly permeable because of it depends on the plasma membrane to filter the substances in and out for the both directions and for the plasma membranes um, it is a se uh, semi permeable where it filters the substances that is going to uh, enter and exit the uh, cells and um, obviously the cell wall allow all substances to pass through because of it does not have any filters um, but for the plasma membrane it only allow a certain substances to pass through and it depends on the um, uh, certain characteristics Okay, so finally, we are going to discuss on the structure called glycocalyx. So what is glycocalyx? It is basically the protein and carbohydrate coat covering the extracellular surface of the plasma membrane. So uh, it is a covering covers the um, plasma membrane. And the loose covering that surrounds the cell membranes of the some bacteria, epithelia, and other cells. So basically, the glycocalyx possess in um, eukaryotic cells as well as in the prokaryotic cells. Um, for the uh, animal epithelial cells, um, the glycocalyx is a fuzz-like coat on the external surface of the uh, of the plasma membrane. So basically, the glycocalyx in the uh, eukaryotic cells um, functions in uh, cell recognition. Um, but for the bacterial cells, the glycocalyx provide the protective coat from the host factors. Okay, so uh, we see the general functions of the glycocalyx basically to allow attachment to the other cells and also to allow the cells to interact with the environment. 
and uh, the possessions of a glycocalyx on the bacteria are basically associated with the ability of the bacteria to establish an infection. So, uh, glycocalyx in the bacteria can be assumed in several forms, for example, the, in the capsule or slime layers. Okay, so uh, for the capsules, um, basically the glycocalyx is condensed form and uh, relatively tight associated with the underlying cell walls and for the slime layers, uh, it is basically the loosely attached glycocalyx that can be removed from the cells more easily. Alright, so um, many of the glycocalyx compounds are negatively charged, giving overall negative surface of the membrane. And um, also because of this glycocalyx, uh, the cells could attach each other by the means of the glycocalyx. So here are the diagrams showing the glycocalyx. Uh, as you can see here, this is the uh, TEM micrograph of the Bacillus subtilis bacterium. Okay, you can see the hair-like glycocalyx here. Uh, it is visible surrounding the cell membrane. So here are the um, what we call the glycocalyx on the Bacillus subtilis uh, bacteria. All right, so um, we finally come to the uh, last subtopics in the chapter five for the uh, prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cells. Okay, so we are going to discuss on the unicellular and multicellular organism. All right. Uh, so uh, previously we have discussed on one aspect of the determinations of the uh, types of cells based on the uh, complexity of the structure where we can divide into the prokaryotic cells and the eukaryotic cells. So here uh, we are going to discuss on another aspect in which of the numbers of cells. So basically living things are constructed of the cells and living things may be be unicellular or multicellular. So remember, for the unicellular and multicellular, we are going to focus on the numbers of cells in uh, that makes that particular organisms. Okay, so unicellular organisms are made only uh, of one cell only, for example, in the prokaryotic, in the bacteria. So bacteria is the unicellular organism. Okay, and the cells of the multicellular organisms are specialized to perform different functions. For example, for the multicellular organism, we have the mesophyte cells for photosynthesis and the root hair cells for the water absorption um, that is uh, particularly examples in the plant uh, organism. Uh, which is the plant okay uh, and humans also are the multicellular animals um, and because of we are made of lots of cells not just one cell um, but assure um, in your minds that um, we also have the eukaryotic cells that is the unicellular Okay, so most of the uh, eukaryotic cells are multicellular animals and uh, the cells in the multicellular animals and plants are specialized so they can share out the processes of life. Um, uh, they work together like a team to support the different process in an organism and organize as one organism. Uh, the eukaryotic cells are generally much bigger than prokaryotic cells um, and uh, this uh, kind of cell, depending on the numbers of cells possessed by particular organism that makes them as the unicellular organisms or multicellular organisms. Okay, so uh, the logistic of carrying out the metabolism set limits on the cell size. Okay, so at the lower limit, for example, the smallest bacteria, mycoplasmas, are between 0 0.5 to 1.0 micron cell size and the most bacteria are uh, 1 to 10 microns in diameter and for the eukaryotic cells basically uh, they are larger which typically 10 to 100 microns in diameter. Mm. 
we uh, have the different sizes of living things um, in uh, the world so basically we have from the tiniest uh, organisms basically the um, bacteria to the largest organism for example in the blue whale okay so for the for the organisms that we cannot see with our naked eyes and we can see with the aid of the microscope um, for for example the bacteria okay so uh, it is in the micron uh, sizes and remember for the viruses this is not the living things but one of the particles that also uh, very tiny that we cannot see with our naked eyes okay and this is the uh, plant and animal cells that is larger than the uh, bacteria cells basically the bacteria cells is the prokaryote cells and the plant and animal cells is the eukaryote cells all right and uh, here's our uh, the um, uh, cells that is larger uh, which is the human egg the ovum the frog egg and uh, the uh, the ant that we can see with our naked eyes but small and the mouse that obviously we can see with our naked eyes in the uh, size of centimeters and uh, towards the humans and the blue whales that is uh, the the blue whales that is the largest um, organism of all okay in terms of the cell diversity we can see our cells uh, differs in sizes and shapes okay so here we can see the different shapes of the cells as you can see here the smooth muscle cells is elongated cells whereby the oocyte which is which is the um, reproductive cells for the female which is in the spherical shapes okay so you can see the different um, forms and shapes also uh, different sizes in um, different types of the cells um, in uh, animals or plant cells okay so basically we have two main types of eukaryotic cells which are the plant cells and the animal cells okay so basically the differences between these two cells is actually on the uh, organelles that they possess okay so some of uh, organelles uh, which is only on the plant cells and some of the organelles which only have in the animal cells and also we can see on the cell wall that is only possessed by the plant cells but not in the animal cell Okay, so this is the examples of the cell diversity in the animal cells. As you can see here in the animal cells, we have the white blood cells and the red blood cells for, um, for the blood cells. And this is the chick cells, the sperm cells for the reproductive cells. And this is the nerve cells for the cell signaling. And this is the muscle cells. And this, and this is the examples of um, amoeba, which is the unicellular. Uh, organisms and also the paramecium, the unicellular organism. Okay, so the cell diversity in the plant cell, which are you can see uh, the diversity in the plant cell. You can have the epidermal cells uh, in the onion. You also have the root hair and the hood. Uh, the you have the root hair cells and also the gut cell. This is examples, and you can find a lot more of the plant cells. Okay, so between the um, animal cells and the plant cells, the similarity between the structure and the organelles is that both of the animal cells and plant cells contains of the cell membranes surrounding the cytoplasms and both of these cells have the nucleus and also both of these cells have the mitochondria for the uh, storage of the energy. Okay, so basically animal and plant cells have the organelles and the organelles basically uh, comp compartmentalize functions within the cells and the organelles uh, of animal and plant cells are similar to each other except uh, for that in the animal cells uh, they have the uh, centrioles and um, in the plant cells, they have the chloroplast and this is other uh, organelles that is differentiate between the animal cells and the plant cells. They share the similarity between um, uh, the both of animal cells and plant cells contains the cell membrane 
they uh, both have the cytoplasm and both have the nucleus and the and these animal cells contains the lysosomes, centrioles, and flagella, but not in the plant cells. And in the plant cells, they also have the chloroplast, central vacuoles, and the tonoplast, the cell wall, and the plasmodesmata. And these structures or organelles is not uh, present in the uh, animal cells. So this is the differences between the plant cells and animal cells whereby um, uh, in terms of the vacuoles, the vacuoles in the plant cells is large and central and uh, whereby in the animal cells basically the vacuole is very small or uh, most of them is absent. Okay, for the uh, food storage, the animal cells um, will store the food in terms of glycogen and for the plant cells, the food storage in terms of the starch. Okay, uh, for the locations of the nucleus, in the animal cells, the nucleus is at the center of the cells whereby in uh, the plant cells, the nucleus near the cell wall because of uh, at the center, uh, basically in the plant cell, you will have the vacuole. Okay, um, so for in terms of sizes, the animal cell size is relatively smaller than the uh, size in the plant cells. And for the animal cells, uh, the uh, cells is irregular shape and um, for the plant cell, it has the regular shapes because of the cell wall present. Okay, and this animal cell is irregular shape because of the, there is no cell wall in the animal cell. Okay, so this is the simplified uh, comparison between the animal cells versus plant cells organelles. So mainly uh, the main structure and organelles such as the cell membrane, nucleus, ribosome, ER, uh, Golgi apparatus and mitochondria uh, which are both present in uh, animal cells and plant cells and for the cell wall, chloroplast and the vacuoles is only present in the plant cell but not in the animal cells. Okay, so by then, uh, this is um, the end of the syllabus for the chapter 5, prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cells and uh, see you next chapter. Okay, so don't forget to do this quiz exercise once you have finished studying this chapter. Okay, till then, thank you and see you later.